for large n, the bounds that are known are between 2 to the 2n and 2 to the n over 2. We're going to prove both of them right here in this class, right before your eyes, right before your very eyes. Watch this. All right. So the upper bound. Where does the upper bound come from? That's the easier of the two. Because we know that R n n is less than or equal to the binomial coefficient 2 n minus 2, choose n minus 1. m plus n minus 2, choose m minus 1. But if they're symmetric, you got that. But wait a minute. What are the binomial coefficients? Those are the number of subsets of a certain size. So this, in fact, is less than or equal to 2 to the 2n minus 2. And of course, that's certainly less than 2 to the 2n. So the Ramsey number rnn is no bigger than 2 to the 2n. I, I want to emphasize the 2n, not the 2 to the n, 2 to the 2n. So that's the, that's the upper bound. Now the lower bound is going to be harder. And here's what I want you to think, because in history, this evolved in two steps. The first step is high school counting. So, Erdos observe, let's say I have a graph on t vertices. I don't even tell you what t is. How many of the graphs that I can form, how many contain a complete graph of size n? I want to know the answer. Well, here's an upper bound. At most, so you take your whole t vertices, and you choose n, and you make this a clique. And then out here, you can do anything you want. And between here and here, you can do anything you want. So at most, t, choose n, choose the n that are going to be the clique. Then you will take all the edges in there. And then for each pair out here, you can do anything you want. t to the 2 to the t minus n, choose 2. And then from here to here, you can do anything you want. 2 to the n times t minus n. So that's an upper bound, at most this many. Now, what's the total number of graphs? On t vertices. Well, 2 to the t choose 2. We learned this back in about the third week of our class. How many, how many contain an in? How do you get an in? You choose some n, but now you have no edges. Everything else is arbitrary. So at most, and the count is the same. This bound and this bound are identical. And now I ask this question. What if twenty 
twice t choose n times 2 to the t minus n choose 2, 2 to the n times t minus n is less than 2 to the t choose 2. What would you conclude? Each term here counts as an upper bound the number of graphs which contain a kn. And it, the same count is the number which contains an in. And if you add those together and you get fewer than the total number of graphs, what does that mean? It means there is a graph which has neither a kn nor an in. That's what it means. There's something left over. I don't know what it is, but it exists. All right, now, how do you analyze an inequality like that? Well, you, you start writing it out. This, is, this term behaves like t to the n over n factorial. This is like t minus n times t minus n minus 1 over 2 plus nt minus n squared less than 2 to the t squared minus t over 2. Now, you take logarithms, put this all stuff up in the numerator, and it becomes an inequality which involves an estimate which is called Stirling's formula. And the estimate for a factorial is that this is asymptotic to this expression, a proof that you can find in any advanced calculus book. Many of you have probably already seen it. I think we've, we've discussed it at some time in our course. This is called Stirling's formula. Sterling's formula. Using Sterling's formula and applying it to this, you get the lower bound shown here with the square root of 2 in the denominator. See that n times the square root of 2 is on the numerator? If you do the calculation carefully using Stirling's formula, then the square root of 2 is in the denominator. And it requires the Lovos local lemma to move the square root of 2 from the denominator to the numerator. And that's really hard. OK, so roughly speaking, the Ramsey number RNN is known to be between 2 to the n over 2 and 2 to the 2n. And these inequalities have been known for 60 years.